I saw something in your bio that was like kind of really interesting. You had during when nine eleven kicked off. What what's this thing about? You had to go down and and to some banks and do some things. What was that? What that, yeah. what's that story about? So this was crazy. Um, it's more of a life story than than anything else. Um, so I had met a girl uh, in August, and um, I, I did not tell anybody I was in the military. And we were talking in uh, August of 2001, and we were supposed to go hang out um, and that evening, and that was of 9-11. And so all of this is happening. I call her at like 10-15, and I was like, hey, um, and I left a voice message. I was like, hey, this is Chris. I know we're supposed to meet up tonight. Uh, not going to be able to do it. Uh, I'll give you a call when I have some time. I'm doing that as I am on the phone here and trying to work out on the computer of how am I going to go pick up things. And so I'm simultaneously working this date, calling this off, who happens to be uh, my wife now. Okay. Um, and so uh, I have to call all these banks and say, how much money do you have? And of course, nobody wants to tell me how much money you have. Right. And I was like, listen, uh, my boss here at McDill is asking me to go pick up all the money and cash that I can. And I need to know how much you have and how much I can withdraw. And uh, so I, I do that and I head downtown um, to downtown Tampa and grab money from banks so that we can hand out cash to um, CENTCOM and SOCOM as they are spinning up and getting out to deploy. Wow. And it's the weirdest thing is you have uh, someone call and says, hey, I need $250,000. I need you to bring it to uh, the airport. And you walk out and these guys just show up and they're like, hey, I heard you have some money. <laughs> Sign here. I hand them a couple hundred thousand dollars. They get on a plane and take off. Not a military plane, but just yeah. a plane. And I'm like, all right, man, I hope <laughs> I'm not going to jail. Right. <laughs> I'm just, just a lieutenant. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and so uh, I, I got to meet Tommy Franks. Um and hand him money, which I am the biggest. You want to talk about a guy who did it right in the military? Yeah, it, it is General Franks, and he got in trouble. That people were like, "Hey, he's taking his wife on planes and everything like this." And the only reason that I remember this is because it was so weird to me that a general was writing me a personal check. And I had personal checks from him for a dollar amount. And I was like, I went to my commander and was like, why, why do I have money from a general handing me this? And he goes, oh, he wants to take his wife with him so that they can spend time together and they can be a family together while he's always gone. And, you know, I can think of another four-star general that did not do that and yeah. got in a lot of trouble, you know, and but I remember being like, well, where does he get this? He calculated the fuel cost of her weight on the aircraft <laughs> and wrote the government a check so that they didn't cost them one dime of fuel or anything else. And I was like, this guy's this guy's got it. He's yeah. locked in. He's amazing. So a uh, huge, biggest fan of, of uh, General Franks out there. Yeah. Sorry, I, I met him one time. He He did like a troop visit when I was in Afghanistan or something. And uh, so I don't really know him that well, but he was super cool and he was giving people hugs and he was like, it, he, I've never heard anything bad about him. And that, that kind of stuff is the only thing I have ever heard about him is that he's a super nice guy, very conscientious, very, just a great dude. Yeah. I've never heard anything bad about him. So that, yeah, that's a lob shot from somebody outside that doesn't know. Mm -hmm. and, and so once you know him and, and have seen it work, everybody's like, no, that didn't happen. Right. That's, right. That's false. So. Well, that's amazing that you were, I mean, cause you know, I'm probably, I, 
hell, you I could have some use some of that uh, op fund that you were handing out during the. I'm sure a lot of the guys <laughs> that have been on this podcast or listened to it have, you know, used that money that you doled out to those guys. That's a that's fascinating. Because I was thinking you said finance, I was like, oh, he's just sitting in you know the finance office on base and processing travel vouchers or whatever. But you were, you were like you had a huge impact on the on the war just by doing that. I mean, I think that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it was it was really fun. And it, you know, I was just a finance person doing travel vouchers, I was in charge of travel vouchers. <laughs> um, but finance does a lot, like yeah. people don't realize what they're doing and, and how money gets charged and where it goes. And and so, um, you know, I've, I've always heard and uh, Colonel Traxler, he was the commander at the 17th. Right. He always stated that there's, there's no tip of the spear in the 17th we're all doing it and supply support finance all of us play a part in able to get the bombs on target hey!